Welcome to today's webinar brought to us, brought to you by Delphix, Couchbase, Datavale, and Actian. I'm Stephen Fagg, Director of Database Trends and Applications and Unisphere Research. I will be your host for today's broadcast. Our presentation today is titled Cloud Migration Best Practices, Top Strategies, and Tools. Before we begin, I want to explain how you can be a part of this broadcast. There will be a question and answer session. If you have a question during the presentation, just type it into the question box provided and click on the submit button. We'll try to get to as many questions as possible, but if your question has not been selected during the show, you will receive an email response. Plus, all viewers today will be entered for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card just for participating. Now to introduce our speakers for today, we have Alberto Sigismondi, Lead Product Manager, Continuous Data Platform at Delphix. Jeff Morris, Vice President of Product and Solutions Marketing at Couchbase. JP Chen, Senior Director and Global Practice Lead at SQL Server Services at Datavale. And James McClymans, VP of Cloud Operations at Actian. Now I'm going to pass the event over to Alberto to get us started. Welcome to the broadcast, Alberto. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. All right, uh, let's talk about data agility in the cloud. Here we go. So there are several reasons why organizations choose to migrate their applications to the cloud. But the primary reason is typically to take advantage of the benefits that the cloud computing offers, right? Um, such as scalability, the ability to scale up or down quickly in response to changing business needs. Flexibility is a big one. The public cloud offers the ability to rapidly provision new resources and services, especially when you compare flexibility with on-premises. Mm -hmm. Reliability, public cloud offers typically offer um, high levels of reliability and availability. And of course, security. Security when it comes to the infrastructure itself. Something that Unfortunately, many organizations um, don't think much is cost. When it comes to cost, um, there is always a debate between what we see between you know, the CIO side of the house and the CTO side of the house, especially for organizations with strong development and testing um, environments and practices. Uh, the CIO obviously is trying also to do a lot more with less, right? So infrastructure gets costly. Why infrastructure in the cloud get costly? Well, because first of all, data keeps growing. I know we have been saying this for years, but it is a reality. Why to hide it? Actually, nowadays, uh, data growth is something you cannot arguably stop because many of your operations beyond development and testing, I'm talking about AI, machine learning, business analytics, right? Business really relies on data, so you cannot stop the trend. And on the other hand, specifically for uh, development and testing, is that data sprawl actually keeps, um, you know, as well growing and growing because as developers and testers move into more modern uh, development best practice, um, you know, agile, DevOps, and so on, um, they need you know, constant access to numerous uh, data, especially if we talk to about databases um, and copies, everything they need in, in order to like, don't slow down right, the, their pipeline. On the CTO side, it's really about you know, budget reduction, you know, uh, that you CIO is, uh, are asking me to just like hurt my development. We cannot be as agile as we wanted to be. We came to the cloud for that reason. And now all of a sudden we're trying to cut corners in the wrong places. So you add security to all of that, right? To the fact that in average for each production database, a large organization, this is average public numbers, needs about 13 copies of that database in non-production, across non-production, add security to that. All of that data that leaves production must be secured. And I cannot say this enough, right? You, you cannot 
move data out of your production networks into especially lower environments without being secured. And what I mean secured is seriously data masking, um, maintaining the integrity of those databases for developers, testers, you know, uh, uh, data scientists, and so on is critical. However, there are ways to mask that data to ensure that whatever happens, the pressure is off. So to summarize data, we believe that data basically is the last automation frontier, uh, especially in development and testing, we have succeeded in automating code, um, testing practices, um, you know, like workflows, everything is fully automated today. But when it comes to move terabytes and terabytes of data, in an agile way and secure way from production to dozens of non-production environments that we are still trying to figure that out. So add to all of these that nowadays, especially since, you know, uh, the early this year and actually late last year, I believe it's safe to say we are, all of us have been asked in one way or the other that we have to do more were less, right? So how can I keep um, investing? How can I keep moving my organization, my applications forward with less? And that's the challenge here. So what I did was we can understand and try to learn from the best, the best organizations that are doing, you know, um, uh, running non-production environments very efficiently in the cloud out there, what is it that they are doing? Well, first, they're using a lot of alt what I call alternative cheaper storage. Let's define it, object storage. Object storage is becoming almost a must in every large enterprise organization, especially, especially for non-production environments. Number two, you have to be able to pay for performance on demand. Nowadays, really is not needed to have cloud instances um, or use cloud storage that is top notch and keep it like that for 365 days a year when actually you're using or leveraging or needing performance only half of that, right? So, but you, you have those resources measured to the top, just thinking about the worst case and you, you pay for that year round. There are ways actually to tune that based on your needs. Similarly, but slightly different is the ability to reduce or actually completely eliminate idle compute span. So again, there are moments in time during a day, during a week, month or quarter, or even entire years where your applications in not production are not like, you know, consuming resources. So they are sitting there idle on. That's a waste. Nowadays, there are enough tools out there that allows you actually to shut down or even destroy those instances and then redeploy them when needed in a, in a very agile way. And a big part of that is the famous storage over allocation. We all love that, right? Um, I'm setting my database. I think it will grow 20% per year for five years. And all of a sudden I pay, you know, any of the cloud vendors, uh, you know, three years of storage are not actually using. Uh, and that's typically happening with EBS storage type, right? Like block storage. With object storage, situation is much better because you pay as you go. That's, you know, I refer to the first recommendation on the top. And finally, um, something dear, of course, and near to me in, in Delphix is virtualize and mask. Um, at the end of the day, what you know, anything, all anything that you can virtualize when it comes to applications, which we all do today. But again, the hardest part is is virtualizing data and masking that data before leaves production is a must today because you could not be finding the relationship between masking, data masking, and saving costs in infrastructure. But the reality is that it is, right? What happens if, you know, you get hacked, you get ransomware, you get any of these problems that we all, we are all actually targets today and you don't have the data, the data secured. Well, that's a, reflected in a big cost. So 
I want to spend a couple of minutes of my time just because, just uh, you know, and how we do it, right? Delphix is a company that you know um, virtu basically virtualizes and mass data for non-production environments with a specific target on development and testing. We are capable actually to run all non-production databases. Seriously, we don't care about the vendor of the database, you know, from Oracle, Couchbase is here today with us, right? From, we can run all of that from object storage today in any of the large public cloud vendors successfully. And we do that thanks to a piece of innovation that we develop it in-house uh, that we call the data cache, which is a cache based not on memory, but on uh, block storage. So we're capable to put all of your large databases on object storage, just cache the pieces of the database that are communicating or interacting with your target non-production applications and put them on these data cache to secure number one, performance, and number two, to allow you to reduce infrastructure costs. Um, in the last minute that I have, I just want to show you a quick example. This is a real example of uh, one of our so many customers in large enterprise. The column on the left is basically how much uh, they were paying, in this case, Azure, on a year for one of our largest servers and databases, which was about 500 terabytes uh, in managed disks. That's the blue part. And the red part is what I uh, refer it before as over allocation, right? They were spending almost $340,000 in storage they were practically not using. As soon as you move all of that to object storage, you can actually see how much you can save by also dynamically increasing or shrinking the data cache I mentioned before so that you can pay for the performance you need. You need awesome performance, you can bring that data cache to 100%. You'll pay a little more, but still save. And for all of the periods of the year when that application doesn't need to run at 100%, you just drop it you know, to as low as 5% to obtain your savings. Um, that was it for me for today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alberto. It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker today, Jeff Morris, Vice President of Product and Solutions Marketing at Couchbase. Uh, welcome to the broadcast, Jeff. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, great to be here and uh, great to be talking about uh, Couchbase Capella. Uh, a database as a service that give you a sense of who we are. We're, we're distributed uh, SQL++ database as a service. Uh, we support really high performance uh, storage clustering replication for what we call modern or uh, premium experience kinds of applications. Those that come from the cloud, go through the edge, operate on, you know, on mobile devices, et cetera. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're uh, publicly traded right now, uh, about 700 employees, et cetera. So, the first kind of thing I want to set, and I'll reinforce what Alberto was just saying, is uh, when you look at, let's say, the magic quadrant for um, uh, cloud database systems, one of the recommendations that uh, Gartner makes is, you know, when you're looking at migrating to the cloud, right, look, avoid picking products because you fall in love with a particular feature, right? If it's valuable, then we all have it. Um, but what they also say is, what you should also avoid is, um, you know, look for uh, vendors that have either the equivalent, but really look for ultimately price performance of the system you're, you're going to uh, adopt. And in our minds, right, architecture is what drives your price performance, especially in the cloud. So one of the reasons or the four reasons why customers come to us is number one, help them boost the performance of failing applications or slowing applications. And we saw a lot of this, these sets of requirements evolve over the last couple of, couple of years. They wanna dramatically increase the flexibility of the application, especially their ability to adopt and, and new capabilities and uh, accelerate their delivery of these applications. They need mobile support, they need IoT and edge support, and do this without breaking the bank. Keep my, my overall cloud costs low. Now I've got examples of this, like who's using this? You're, you know, 
Two out of three credit card accounts uh, on the planet are managed through FICO's Falcon system. That's a Couchbase application. It has less than a millisecond response time for when it's checking for whether you've got a fraudulent activity or not. Amadeus really dramatically improved their look to book uh, activity of when you're starting now that you're starting to travel again. Um, they're handling over 20 million uh, um, uh, operations per second and afford no downtime with Couchbase. Your LinkedIn feed is managed uh, uh, inside of Couchbase and the City at Sea application at uh, Carnival and Princess Cruise Lines uses a, a device that you wear, you know, basically a medallion that you wear, um, married up to 15,000 sensors on every ship. And that's making sure that it's creating a great experience for you. It remembers, you know, that your children like French toast or that you uh, like a Bloody Mary at brunch every day. Um, and all of these are uh, designed to deliver these really killer experiences for you and your user constituencies. But I like what um, Alberto said a minute ago is where he was talking about some of the cloud challenges that we see are things like data sprawl. You're building these great microservices applications and you're, you're using a particular design strategy of a, a polyglot persistence, right? Where you're using exactly the right database for exactly the right operation. Uh, you need a you know, Redis or Memcached for caching. You need a document store for flexibility. You need relational databases for transactions. You need uh, search, elastic search for full text search, things like that, right? Well, that's kind of the, the inherent uh, best practice design right now. But what that creates is a massive amount of database sprawl or activity sprawl. And I'll show you what that looks like when you really look at the AWS, you know, in, in this case, an AWS based design where you've got lots of different um, uh, containers running microservices. You've got lots of different um, uh, operations in services inside of Amazon and You've got five different data stores that are that are either replicating or uh, duplicating a lot of data here. So my proposal for you is to stop doing that. Right. We know that from a, a historical perspective, from scientific uh, experimentation and just the way technology evolves, that uh, technology tends to collapse upon itself and converge. This is what happened to your iPhone. It used to be a watch, a phone, a PDA and a camera. And now it's just one thing. Well, that's happening in the database space. So you can have now a cat, you know, an integrated caching system that's uh, accessible via, you know, a key value access for really high speed operations, but marry that up with the flexibility of a JSON document store. And you can have transactionality and SQL uh, operations that you know how to use inside of, you know, inside of that same database to do those, uh, those core transactional reliability, reliability uh, uh, activities. You can do geographic search. You can do full text search. You could do analytics on live data. You can do change data capture and eventing on, uh, uh, on the same data and then synchronize it out to your mobile systems. That's the fundamental converged idea or the multi-model uh, uh, access idea that Couchbase brings you. So the core capabilities of, of our system is one, it's really fast. It's it, remember, it's the original, the origin story of Couchbase. It was the the merger of two teams: the team from uh, MemcacheD and the team from CouchDB from Couch One, and they put the best ideas of both in memory speed and flexibility of a of a JSON document store, make it distributed and massively scalable. And that's what we've done. And then we added relational capabilities, schema-like capabilities, SQL, uh, a SQL query syntax, I'll show you in a second, um, search, analytics, et cetera. But really what you end up getting here is a really fast system that's highly affordable, that's really versatile to support whatever kinds of capabilities you want to put in your applications. And like I said, it's as easy as SQL. So when I say easy as SQL, here's what I mean. On the left hand side is SQL 92, typical relational SQL. In the middle is my SQL++, that's just SQL for JSON. And on the right hand side is the Mongo query language as an example of what you would have to program in order to do the same functionality. And so you, you enjoy all of the, 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 the syntax and lexicon of, uh, of, of SQL in SQL++. You get to do joins. You can do joins on collections. You can do joins on documents. You get to do subqueries. You can nest objects in the in the JSON uh, uh, document. You can uh, uh, nest arrays in the document. 
Um, and then it supports distributed acid transactions. We have a, a patent uh, for that. We have patents for cost-based optimization of JSON documents. You get user-defined functions. You get parallel processing analytics all at the same time, all using the same query language that you already know. So when I talk about, you know, what's the effect of using Couchbase in this kind of environment is you're going to enjoy faster release cycles because you're actually not managing as much stuff. Um, you're going to have a significantly less duplication in data sprawl. What Alberto was just referring to also is you don't need to have all of these different um, uh, spe specific clusters of data for the caching, so your, your caching in Redis or your uh, uh, documents in Mongo or your search in Elastic. Um, all of those things can go away and be consolidated into one system. It'll scale more easily. It's a simplified design and, and therefore it's less complex and easier to maintain ultimately helping you drive lower costs of operations and lower infrastructure because as Gartner said, price performance is the thing. So why would you choose Couchbase Capella as this vehicle? Well, one, it's fully managed. It's fully managed by Couchbase. It's available on all three clouds. Um, it gives you really uh, uh, superior performance, high availability and disaster recovery all built in. We have more capabilities in your typical uh, 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 your typical NoSQL database. We have enterprise grade security and services and QA to, to, to drive down your risk, help management efforts, overall lower your TCO. But you know, you don't have to believe me, right? I talk to my customers all the time, and you know what? 57% of my customers said that they were able to reduce their infrastructure costs by half when switching to Couchbase. So the advantage is, is you, know, you enjoy uh, operational expense instead of capital expense if you're going from a data center into the cloud. Uh, it's a single platform with less licensing complexity, less hardware complexity or instance complexity. It is a pay-as-you-go kind of system, uh, as, as uh, Alberta was mentioning a minute ago, and it's elastically scalable. You can scale your resourcing up or down. You can scale the services that we offer up or down. Um, and uh, you know, dollar for dollar, it's a price performance winner. So you don't have to take my word for it go try it out go check it out uh, we talk we have a white paper available of how to optimize your applications and modernize them we have resources as to why you would choose a NoSQL system over other systems we have a, a, a trials of uh, couchbase capella available for free for 30 days and we've got a playground where you can test out your code or see what the other capabilities of the environment happen to be all directly in that capella experience so as I conclude, really, the, the, the key thing that, that we're trying to uh, convey is, you know, I can help you reduce complexity in the cloud, manage your, your overall cost of operations, and give you more capabilities than you've, uh, you've had before. Uh, my customer from Broad Jump, Phil Lapercio, said, you know, it's kind of the trifecta of value. I get more speed, more features at a lower cost. So that's really all your goal, your goal in strategy and migrating to the cloud. So, Stephen? That's my prepared remarks. Back to you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Okay, I'm going to introduce our next speaker for today. We have JP Chen, Senior Director and Global Practice Lead at SQL Server Services at DataVail. Welcome to the broadcast, JP. Thank you, Stephen. Hi, everyone. Did you know that 94% of the enterprises are already using some form of cloud services? and cloud spending is expected to grow at more than six times the rate of general IT spending to 2023. In the next 10 minutes, we're gonna discuss how you can harness the power of cloud migration for databases to propel your business forward. Hello again, everyone. My name is JP Chen, and I'm the Senior Director for SQL Server Practice from DataVail. I'm really fortunate to have the privilege to work with 200 plus uh, SQL DBAs in the US and India, supporting 250 plus customers. Even if you have zero or 25 SQL Server DBAs, or if you have one or 1,000 plus SQL Server instances, our team can help you in supporting your SQL Server environment 24 seven, maximizing uptime and also minimizing outages. Just a brief intro about DataVail. We are one of the biggest database service support provider in North America. In addition to SQL Server, we also support 
other database platforms such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, DB2, and Oracle. We have been in business for 16 plus years, eight plus years of cloud support, and our team consists of 100 plus cloud essays and engineers. Some of the passive outcomes include 700 plus customers and 200,000 databases managed and 150 plus cloud migrations. Our discussion today will cover the following topics. The first one is why database migration to a cloud. Second one is database migration journey to a cloud and then migration types, migration tools, and then DMS, SCT, and some of the best practices. Right, the highly critical why. Why are you doing it, right? Why database migration to a cloud? Usually there are a whole list of, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, ideas and, and reasons why you may want to migrate to a cloud. Usually, the top ones that we have identified in the past throughout all the clients that we support, revolving around modernization, right? You want to upgrade to a more advanced system with better technologies, making your operations more efficient and up to date. The second one also we could go, right? You may want to consider switching database solutions. Yes choose from one database solution uh, and migrate to a different one. That best suits your needs, giving you more flexibility in managing your data. The third one's cost saving, right? Everyone's looking to save money, right? Uh, with cloud migration, you can actually save money because you will no longer need to spend money on maintaining your own database infrastructure. You will pay for what you use, and cloud providers often offer scalable pricing models. And the next one is for the enhanced security and compliance. Right? Cloud providers usually have very strong security measures in place to protect your data. And they maintain compliance certification to ensure that you uh, adhere to the regulations that are required. And the last one we notice is the HADR. You can actually increase the HADR, the high availability and disaster recovery. Cloud databases have multiple data centers in different locations. They ensure that if one center experiences an outage, the others will still provide access to your data. This results in better reliability and minimizing the risk of losing access to your database in case of a disaster. Okay. Database migration journey to a cloud. Okay. We identify there are usually seven critical steps. These require to perform in sequence, right? I'm going to do them way quickly here. The first one to, to plan, I right? need to know your requirements and also make a decision on the cloud provider. Next, you need to analyze the uh, your current database environment and determine its complexity and also very quickly compatibility of the cloud, if they're compatible or not. Uh, in the next one, uh, you will actually modify or reformat your data to be comparable with the chosen cloud database solution. Okay, and after that, you will actually migrate. That's when you transfer your data from your on-premises on databases to the cloud. After migration, you will test the new cloud database to ensure everything works as expected. And, and once you do that, you once you confirm everything works well, you're gonna do a cutover. That's where you switch using your old on-premise databases to the new cloud database. Finally, you will continually to monitor and fine tune your databases, your cloud databases to ensure it runs efficiently and also meets your needs. There are usually two general types of uh, migrations. The first one's homogeneous, second one's heterogeneous. Uh, with ho homogeneous, that's when you are keeping the same platform, but just change the environment. Since everything's roughly in the same platform, compatibility issues are minimal, making the migration process simpler and less complex. With heterogeneous migrations, you are changing both platforms and the environment of your database. The process can lead to modernizing your database, but 
it presents some compatibility challenges because two platforms are different. The migration process will be more complex and might require additional steps to ensure smooth transition. You have three different migration tools to help you migrate a database over to a cloud. The first one, native tools, right? They are designed to specifically for database platforms you are, use, you are working with right now and, and help migrate your data within the same platform or to a comparable platform. Since they are made by the database provider, they tend to work really well for migration within the same platform family. Okay. The second one is database migration services, BMS. BMS is a specialized service that helps you migrate your data from one database platform to another, handling the process for you. BMS can be used for both homogeneous and heterogeneous migrations and automates the process to make it easier and more efficient. Uh, the next one is schema conversion to SCT. When you're migrating a database to a different platform, you will need to change the schema, for example, the structure of your databases to make it comparable. The schema conversion tool helps you convert schema from one database platform to another, addressing compatibility issues during heterogeneous migrations. In the next two slices, we will go into further review of DMS and SCT. Uh, as discussed earlier, so DMS supports both homogeneous and also heterogeneous migrations. This flexibility means that DMS can handle various moving scenarios for your data. One of the key advantages of DMS is that it minimizes downtime, even offers zero downtime during migration passes. Like this means that while your data is being moved, your application can continue to run smoothly with little to no interruptions. Like DMS works with a variety of source and target databases, including relational, NoSQL, and data warehouses. Uh, this broad compatibility makes a versatile option for your database migration needs. And it also can help you reduce costs, right? It can go as low as say three dollars per terabyte. Okay? Definitely really appealing. Okay. Uh, the next one is the schema conversion to right? It automates the schema conversion if we as we discussed earlier, right? With uh, SCT, you will receive a detailed assessment report highlighting conversion challenges with color code systems, green, well, that means easy, similar traffic light, green is easy, right, to go, okay. Great, uh, that, that cannot be converted, well, objects that cannot be converted, orange is that going to require some effort, right, there's some warning, right, it's going to be very really complicated, significant manual work will be required to convert, okay. Right, just want to highlight that SCT also leverages the WQF, workflow qualification framework, right, uh, to make assessment and it's a comparability checker. Some of the best practices, we do have a long list. However, the three of them that I want to highlight is that definitely the last three, right, perform thorough testing, right? You definitely want to test, make sure everything, identify the fixes and issues before you migrate. And even after you migrate, you need to continue to monitor and optimize. And the last one, really critical, right? We definitely want to suggest and, and ask you to consider partnering with a with an experienced managed service provider with a proven track record in database migrations. They can provide expert guidance and support making your migration experience smoother and more successful. Right? Definitely Dataval is one of the top and big companies that's out there can help and assist you on that. With that, okay, thank you. Back to you, Stephen. Thank you very much, JP. Okay, I'm excited to introduce our final speaker for today. We have James McClymans, VP of Cloud Operations at Actian. Welcome to the broadcast, James. Good morning and afternoon. Thank you for joining today. Um, my focus uh, today will be on how you can optimize your cloud potential by maximizing the benefits of innovative tools and strategies and technology. Um, this will help your organization fully leverage the advantages of cloud computing. Um, we'll start today with an introduction to cloud computing. Uh, we'll discuss its different types of, uh, or different types and deployment models. Uh, we'll cover the key benefits of cloud adoption. Uh, following that, we'll look into innovative tools, strategies, and technologies uh, that will help maximize uh, their cloud potential. 
and afterwards we'll discuss essential uh, cloud optimization best practices and then finally we'll wrap up uh, presentation take any questions um, cloud computing uh, refers to the on-demand delivery of computing resources over the internet uh, these resources include storage databases software applications uh, there are three main types of cloud computing uh, models, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. In addition, there are four uh, deployment models, which are public, private, hybrid, and multi-cloud. Each model has its own um, unique advantage depending on your organization's specific needs. Uh, cloud adoption offers a range of benefits for organizations. These include scalability, allowing your organization to grow and adapt to changing demands, uh, cost efficiency, uh, as you only pay for what resources you consume, flexibility and agility, which help you quickly respond to new opportunities, uh, challenges, uh, improved security, uh, since cloud providers invest heavily in protecting their infrastructure, uh, enhanced collaboration as team members can easily access and work on shared files from anywhere in the world. And finally, business continuity as cloud-based solutions minimize downtime and uh, obviously data loss and risk. To get the most out of cloud computing, it is essential to utilize innovative uh, tools, strategies, and technologies. These include cloud management platforms, which help manage and optimize cloud resources, uh, like infrastructure as code, a method for managing infrastructure through code and automation, uh, containers, organization, or orchestration, uh, which streamline application deployment and management, microservices, architecture, uh, which is a design approach that breaks applications into small independent services. Uh, serviceless computing, which enables you to run applications without managing uh, servers and emerging technologies like edge computing, quantum computing, and uh, blockchain as a service. Cloud optimization best practices. Uh, to optimize your cloud potential, it's crucial to implement best practices. These include right sizing uh, resources, ensuring you allocate appropriate amount of resources to meet your needs, uh, cost monitoring and control, which is keeping track of expenses to avoid budget overruns, uh, automated scaling, which is allowing your infrastructure to adapt to workload changes, performance monitoring, uh, to identify and address any performance bottlenecks and ensuring security and compliance. Um, next, I wanna talk about a little bit of a strategy from a cloud operations perspective. Um, this is basically what DevOps versus site reliability versus platform engineering um, are basically three roles within the cloud operation realm, um, software development and I Teen operations that have merged to help organizations deliver innovative products and services at ever increasing pace. DevOps is a methodology that combines software development and IT operations to improve uh, the speed and quality of software delivery. It focuses on creating a more streamlined and efficient software development process that allows uh, your organization to deliver high quality software at scale. Uh, site reliability engineering focuses on maintaining the reliability and availability of your platform, your website, uh, your software as a service, uh, SREs, use automation, monitoring, and proactive testing to identify and address potential issues before they become critical. And then the last uh, strategy is platform engineering which is a role that focuses on creating and maintaining tools, your platform that support the software development process. Um, platform engineers design and implement development environments, build and deploy uh, pipelines and other tools that make it easier for deployment teams to create tests and deploy software more efficiently. Um, 
While those roles have some key differences, they are all focused on creating more efficient and effective software development processes. They all require a deep understanding of monitoring software development and operational practices. And by combining software development, cloud operations, IT roles, um, this will help your organization to deliver a more high quality software at scale while maintaining reliability and availability. Uh, in conclusion, leveraging innovative tools, strategies, and technology is crucial to maximizing the potential of cloud computing. It is essential to keep up with emerging technologies and continuously improve your cloud implementation. Uh, back to you, Stephen. Thank you very much, James. Okay, well, we're going to dive into questions from our viewers. Alberto, the first question is for you. Could you clarify how you succeeded in obtaining good database performance from the object storage service? Uh, sure. So th this is at the basis of the technology that we offer at Delphix. Um, basically, the, uh, the, the software engineers that work for us here at Delphix are, are the software engineers that uh, created uh, basically, um, the ZFS file system could, could, could be get, getting down into a, much of a technicality. But def, what they did is they found a way to create a cache technology that is basically uh, implemented at the block storage level, which is the typical storage where you run databases. But we don't cache the entire database. The entire database and all of the subsequent copies you need are sitting in object storage, which is what gives you the savings. What we cache are only little blocks of or little pieces of that database, which are the ones that the application is requesting from a writing or reading perspective. So everything happens in the background, and that is how we succeed in providing the same performance um, while having the bigger part of your database sitting in object storage. That's what basically provides performance and savings. Understood. Thanks for clarifying, Alberto. Jeff, our next question is for you. Can you provide more details on infrastructure as code and how it can help improve our cloud management? Uh, yeah, and in terms of, um, you know, I guess philosophically, there's kind of two, um, two areas to go with this. One is uh, supporting, let's say, a uh, autonomous operator, you know, Kubernetes-based uh, design or architecture so that you can control everything uh, in an automated way using uh, CNCF-based uh, technologies. Or the other one, it, it, the, the opposite is depend on a vendor like myself to manage the entirety of the system and, you know, and, and make sure that uh, uh, things are operating uh, uh, correctly. So, um, the, and, and Couchbase generally supports the latter, but in fact, we actually support both. Uh, we do have a you know, manage yourself kinds of um, uh, deployment capabilities, whether it's uh, uh, you install the system you know, directly by yourself or you use our um, CNCF based uh, uh, product set to indeed manage everything as, uh, as a Kubernetes powered you know, code based environment. Um, so I, kinda, I, I can do both. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I think our customers are finding just better value, ease of complexity, and ease of uh, responsibility when they um, go with uh, Couchbase Capella. Understood, Jeff. James, would you like to weigh in on that question as well about infrastructure as code? Sure. Uh, can you hear me okay? Absolutely. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Um, so yeah, infrastructure as code um, is a good way to managing and provisioning your infrastructure. Um, the approach helps you improve your cloud management by ensuring uh, consistency, reducing manual or human errors. Uh, it also helps with enabling version, version control um, and making your updates more efficient. 
the tools that I like to use are uh, Terraform, uh, Harness, and uh, uh, some of the you know default uh, tools that might be in uh, the different cloud providers like Azure Resource Manager or uh, Azure DevOps. Got it. Thanks, James. Okay, JP, our next question is for you. How do I ensure data security during and after the migration process? Sure, right. So data security is actually a top priority and concern for many of our clients, for everyone in general, generally speaking, right? Definitely we would suggest that use encryption, both in transit and also at rest during the migration process, right? Of course, like configure the appropriate security settings, access controls, and network isolation for your new cloud-based database, just to ensure like compliance and make sure they uh, you know, follow the regulations, adhere to regulations and best practices. The key is to encrypt by right? using encryption. Understood. Thanks, JP. Okay, Alberto, we're going to circle back to you. The question is, you mentioned you can fully automate any database data masking process so that any production data arrives in non-production fully masked. How do users know if they have masked data or not in the database shared with them? Ah, that's, uh, that's an interesting one. So um, it's up to you as an organization, meaning many of our large enterprise customers they don't want end users to know so um uh, that could be a dba or an application owner you, you what you do the first thing you get a copy of your database um in in delphix they mask the data based on the profiling requirements of whomever will use the data it can be a different uh, type of masking for different people and and then they put this database available for the developer or the tester to use. So they self-serve basically these copies instantly. And so if some of our organizations do tell everybody that, hey, you know, you can be a peace of mind because the database you are getting is uh, complete, is integral to what you need for your application and is masked. So if you make a mistake, if you lose it, if you try to sell it, if, if it gets stolen, if you get attacked with ransomware, that's, that's okay, no pressure. Um, but some other organizations believe that that could be also a social networking type of risk, so they don't share. And they just share out of production all of the data fully masked, uh, which again uh, is uh, fully uh, workable and usable for the same intent of, or, on the or purposes that um, the end users will need. Um, and they don't know that is masked. So yep, yeah, it's up to the data owner. Understood, thanks Alberto. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. our next question is for you. How can we maintain compliance with industry specific reg regulations when using cloud services? Obviously always a big topic with cloud. Well, I, I think what's interesting about that is, you know, it's really a, um, uh, a matter of time, right? And this is certainly what we found. You know, we uh, uh, we are HIPAA compliant, right? So we've gone through all of the exercising exercises to make sure that uh, we take care of uh, uh, of health information. Um, we are SOC two Type two compliant, right? So all of the operational controls that are expected out of a out of a cloud vendor are um, uh, are, are are taken care of, and the way that that particular uh, regulation is, is driven is uh, through basically just um, your uh, your accounting firm or your, your your auditor observing your behaviors and observing your practices uh, and so that takes time and the same holds true with PII right for uh, uh, PII and uh, and, and uh, or see sorry PCI um, for fi for financial services which is uh, one of the exercises we're underway uh, doing so it's really just a, you know a continuous process from our standpoint of making sure that we're flagging every particular aspect of the regulation the the challenge of course is it's not only just are there things that you know my database ends up doing to make sure that everything is is secure but it's also 
somewhat dependent on my cloud provider, somewhat dependent on all of my uh, business practices that we do as a uh, uh, as a data operator. Um, but yeah, I, I think the primary thing is it takes time, and 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 we're working our way up that particular um, stack. But uh, you know, I think in terms of our ability to come to market as quickly as as anyone else, I, I don't know you know anyone who's hit these marks as as quickly as we have with Capella. But uh, uh, yeah, it's it's really a function of um, you know we know what the regulations are, we know who the auditors are, uh, and just knocking down their list. Got it. James, would you like to weigh in, in on that as well, maintaining compliance with uh, industry-specific regulations in the cloud? Sure. Uh, using cloud services, uh, basically you need to understand what your compliance requirements are going to be, uh, selecting a cloud provider that meets those requirements, uh, whether it's implementing necessary security, any governance uh, measures, um, and then always working closely with your cloud provider uh, maybe your organization's legal and compliance teams uh, to ensure that your your cloud adheres to your relevant regulations, um, kind of like what Jeff was talking about with PCI and HIPAA and all those other ones. Got it. JP, a uh, question for you. How can I monitor and optimize my migrated database in the cloud? Oh, sure. Right. So the question is like how can you monitor and optimize your migrated database in the cloud? Okay. Definitely, we suggest leverage your cloud-specific monitoring tools and services. For example, CloudWatch, that's from AWS, right? Azure Monitor, right? that's for Azure, and uh, cloud, Google Cloud Monitoring, just to gain insights into your database performance, right? and also continuously optimize your database by implementing cloud-native features such as uh, auto scaling, automated backups, and performance tuning. I just wanted to highlight that, right? In addition to that, I would definitely suggest to have experts, right? Uh, DBA experts to uh, to to do this and help assist your team with these, like, the tasks such as auto scaling, right? Setting up setting up correctly, and also like, you know configuring these automated backups and optimize performance. In addition. With Datavel, we do have our own proprietary monitoring system, right? We do have checkbooks to monitor these cloud databases. And you'll be able to alert us and, and also collaborate with your team, notify you on what type of performance problem you may be having, and definitely like, assist in resolving those performance problems as well. Understood. Well, we're almost at the top of the hour, but one more question from me to all of you. And we'll start with Alberto. If there's one thing you'd really like our audience today to walk away keeping in mind, what would that be? Alberto, you go first. Um, I think that uh, the one thing is that, you know, migrating to the cloud uh, definitely can be achieved, uh, you know, in both maintaining or, or achieving the scalability, flexibility, and reliability that you're looking while controlling costs. Uh, th there are many tools out there. Delphix is just not the only one. Um, and uh, and just, you know, it takes a little bit of research and help from us vendors, but it's definitely achievable. Understood. Jeff, you're next. Yeah, I, you know, I think one of the big drivers uh, for organizations right now is that you, is their cloud bill and the overall managing your, your costs. And, and as you know, we started out the the notion of uh, care about price performance, care about versatility, um, and care about your overall TCO. I think those are the key things to uh, to be looking for. And you know, uh, and but you certainly want to uh, uh, to do the move, right? It's it, it's 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 a, a case of you can't stay where you are, but you can be you know deliberate about how you uh, move into the cloud. Um, and you know, I would just keep your eye on, on that particular price performance ball. Absolutely. Uh, JP, your, your thoughts, uh, one thing you'd like our audience to keep in mind, you know, today. Yes. One thing I would suggest our audience keep in mind is to now, migration to the cloud is a rather interesting and complex topic, right? And a subject. So definitely in these cases, I would suggest to collaborate and partner with a very really experienced like, MSP, managed service provider. Like sure enough, like you you are top experts in one area. However, with an MSP, we 
for the ones do this on a daily basis. We we have thousands of customers in terms of migrations. But having a proven track record on database migrations, and definitely like our experts can provide some guidance and support for your team to make sure everything goes smoothly and more successfully. Understood. And last but not least, James, if there's one thing you'd really like our audience to walk away uh, keeping in mind. I would think the one strategy I would say is have a plan. Have your your whole process of how you're going to migrate to the cloud. Um, I can't emphasize that being the most important thing. I've done many of them. Um, and having a plan is probably your best uh, your best solution. Absolutely. I think those are wise words. Well, that is all the time we have for questions today. If we didn't get to yours, our apologies. But as I mentioned earlier, we, you will receive an email response. We're going to share these with the speakers. I would like to give a huge thank you to our speakers today for coming on board and sharing their insights and expertise. Once again, Alberto Sigismundi, Lead Product Manager, Continuous Data Platform at Delphix. Jeff Morris, Vice President, Product and Solutions Marketing at Couchbase. JP Chen, Senior Director and Global Practice Lead, SQL Server Services at Datavail. And James McClymans, VP of Cloud Operations at Actian. So if you in our audience today would like to review this presentation or send it over to a colleague, you can use the same exact URL that you used for today's live event. It will be archived and you will receive an email notification from us once the recording is up on dbta.com to check out. Also, as I mentioned earlier, just for participating in today's event, you could win this $100 Amazon gift card. The winner will be announced on May 31st. We'll reach out to you via email and let you know if you're the lucky viewer. Thank you everyone for joining us today and we hope to see you again soon.